there we should be colliers. Aye, strike quickly. Move. The quarrel is between our masters and us, they men. Tis all one. I will show myself a tyrant. When I walk with the men, I will be civil with the maids. I will cut off their heads. The heads of the maids. Oh, the heads of the maids. Or oh, their maiden heads. Take it in what sense thou wilt. They must take it in what sense. To feel it. <laughs> Me that shall feel while I'm able to stand. Tis no I am a pretty piece of flesh. Draw thy tool. Here comes one of the Montague. Quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run. Fear. Not to <laughs> marry. I fear thee. Let us take it all on our sides. Let him begin. I will frown as I pass by, and let him take it as he wishes. No, yes, he is dead! I will wipe my face. Like so, which is disgrace to him to be Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? Uh, do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, I say better, he comes one of my master's kings. Yes, better, sir! You lie! Better you! Remember my touching blow! Put up thy bed hands! You know not what you do! Can you bend body and look upon my death? I do, but keep the peace. Put up thy weapon, I'll manage to part these men with me. What, your own and your own peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell. All I to use are me! How are they, coward? Sadness, cuz I do love a woman. 
I ain't so near, but I suppose you love. I write good mark and it is fair enough. I write fair mark, fair cousin Sue is here. Well, then that is you, miss. She'll not be here with Cupid's arrow. Then she's sworn to still even touch. She hath, and in that very makes huge ways. She hath forsworn to love it in that bad wife of death that lived to tell it now. He will buy me, just forget to think about it. Cupid is stricken, blind cannot forget. Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctor or else die in debt. But Montague is bound as well as I am, penalty alike. Tis not hard I think for men so old as we to keep the peace. Honourable reckoning are you both. And pity tis you be did not so long. Now, my lord, what say you to my suit? Ah, saying over what I said before. My child is but a stranger in the world. She hath not seen a change of fourteen summers. Let two more summers wither in their pride and they may think her right to be a bride. Isn't she a happy mother's mate? And too soon marred are those who early made. Earth has swallowed all my hopes but she. She is the hopeful lady of earth. But woo her gentle Paris. Get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. So long as I hold an old custom feast, whereto I have invited many a guest such as I love. And you among the score, one more most welcome makes my number more. Such comfort as to lusty young men feel when well apparelled they fall on the hill. Here all, all see, and look how most his merit most shall be. Come, go with me. Uh, go, sir, eh? Trudge about through fair Verona, and find those persons out whose names are written here. And uh, to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Okay? <laughs> Tuck, man. One fire burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn, giddy, and be helped by backwards turning. Take thou some new infection to thine eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Well, that is excellent for that, good and good fellow. God be good. I pray so. Can you read? I am only unfortunate in my misery. <laughs> Perhaps you've learned it was helpful, but I pray can you read anything you see? I have another letters in the language. <laughs> You say honestly, rest you, Mary. <laughs> say that I can read. Oh, um. Signor Martino and his wife and daughters, <coughs> County Anton and his beauteous sisters, Lady Widow of Vitruvio, Signor Placentia <coughs> and his lovely nieces, <coughs> Matricia and his brother Valentine, <coughs> my uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair mistress and wife. Oh! Libya, <coughs> Signor Valencia and his cousin Tybalt. See you on the lively Helena. A fair assembly. Whither should they come? Oh, whither? To our house. Supper. To whose house? My master's. <laughs> Indeed, I should have asked you that before. I'll tell you about us. My master is the great rich Capulet. And if you not be one of the Montagues, I pray, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you, Mary. At this same ancient feast of the Capulets, sups the fair Rosalind, whom thou so loves. With all in my beauty. Go thither, and with an unattended eye, compare her face to some that I should show, and I'll make you think you're swan. Ha! Ah, good word. One fairer than my love, the all-seeing sun there saw her mansions first, the world begun. Ha! Oh, she saw her fair, none else being white, but herself poised with herself in either eye. But in those crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady love against some other maid that I shall show shining in this feast. And she shall scan so well what now seems best. No, I'll go along. No such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in the splendor of mine own. Child. 
you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less? No less? Maybe that women grow by men. <laughs> be free me. Can you like in Paris as love? Oh, look to like it, looking like you move. But no one did find that mine eye and your strength is the consent to make it fly. <coughs> madam, madam, the guests are come. Supper served up. You called my young ladies after. <coughs> the nurse cursed in the pantry. And everything is extremity. I must hence to wait. I must issue. Follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the camp is <laughs> Go, girl. See happy nights to happy days. <laughs> Straight on kisses dream. Some eye of the grass on the soldier's neck, and then you hear cutting foreign throats of breaches and muscular Spanish blades, of pelts five fathoms deep. And anon, drums in his ear, which he starts and wakes. And being thus frightened, swears at prayers when he sleeps again. This is that very man. This is the hag when they fly on their backs. That presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This hey, is she. Peace with you, shall that talk us of nothing? True, I talk of dreams. Of the children on the idle brain, because of nothing but vain fancy, which are of thinner substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind. This wind you call the blowless for ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. Be too early. For my mind, this gives some consequence. Yet hanging in a star shall briefly begin his fearful day. This night's realm will expire, turn with a spy's light close to my breast. Some vile forfeit of untimely death. He that hath the steerage of my course direct my sail. On, lusty gentlemen. That's your right. That's your right. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. The ladies that have been told us on great big corn will have a bath with you. Aha, uh -huh, my mistresses. Which of you all would have the right to dance? Well, she that has curtains, she all swear hath corns. Ah, oh, welcome, gentlemen. I have seen that they lie to one advisor. Tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as would please. Tis gone, tis gone. You're welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall, give room and footed girls. Oh, more the lights you made, and turn the tables up. You quench the fire, the room will grow too hot. Ah, sir, there's some of the poor sport young as well. Nay, sit for come, Captain. You and I have passed our dancing days. Well, Miss Larson's just so far and last. Ladies, that the dot in which the hand of yonder knight. So, for she doth use the torches to burn bright. Seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel with an idiot tear. Too rich for use. For it too dear. So she has no doubt to be opposed to the young lady girl at her fellow shows. Swear to sight, for I never saw true beauty till this night. What day is the slave coming? Here comes the romantic face of a fair and strong and outflirting. Now I'm going to stop it, I'm my kid, to strike you. There I hold it, I'm I'm out to do it or storm you so. Uncle Lee says I want to hear our flower. Bill and Lenny's here to come in spite of the spine of our celebrity. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, 
I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight legged, quivering thigh, and the domain that their adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appears to us. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. I cannot anger him. To anger him to raise the spirit in his mistress' circle. My invocation is fair and honest in his mistress' name. I conjure only but to raise up him. Come. To be consoled with the humorous night. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Romeo, good night. I'll to my truffle bed. This bill bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go then, for it is insane to seek a man that means not to be found. Tea for two, the nurse for me. The nurse for you, that's fine by me. You oh. <laughs> just have scars that never felt a wound. So, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and duly enters the sun. Arrives their sun and kill the endless moon is already sick and pale with grief. But thou art made out far more fair than she. Be not amazed that she is envious. Vessel divisions with sick and green, and none of fools do wear it. <coughs> Cast it off. She's not me, she's my love. Oh, but she knew she was. She speaks, yet she says nothing but that. I will answer it. I am too bold. She's not to me, she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all of heaven having some business one treat her eyes to twinkle in their seals to see it's alone with her. Her eyes are there, veining her head. Rise in heaven through the airy region, streams so bright that birds would sing and think of them up night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand? That I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Oh, she speaks. Speak again, by then. Thou hast always this night to be the messenger of heaven. Romeo, <coughs> Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? And I, thy father, refuse thy name.
by yonder blessed moon I valid tipped and silver all the way. Swept up by the moon. The inconsistent moon, the lovely changes in her circle. <laughs> Let's go up and likewise there. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. <laughs> Opposed kings and captains still in man as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worse of the other, full soon the cake of death eats up that. <coughs> Benedicite, what early tongue so sweet saluted me? Young son, it argues of this tempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Or if not so, then here I eat it right. Our Romeo hath not been to bed tonight. At last is true. The sweet rest was mine. God pardon, see what's out with Rosaline. I forgot 
forgotten that name, and that name's well, that's good, my son. But where hast thou been then? <laughs> Tell me, thou asking me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy. My son and son, one hath wounded me, that's by me wounded. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confessions by but riddling shrift. And plainly know my heart is set on the fair daughter of rich Camilla. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine. Nor combine, so what thou must combine by holy marriage. When and where we, and how we met, we may exchange a vow, tell these we pass. Yes, I pray <coughs> that thou must consent to marry us today. Holy St. Francis, <laughs> what a change is here. Is false a line that thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then truly lies, not in their hearts, but in their eyes. <laughs> Jesu Maria, what a deal of pride hath washed thy sallow cheek for Rosaline. Lo, here upon the cheek is stained off seal of an old tear not washed off yet. If e'er I lost thyself at these woes thine, thou and these woes were all for Rosaline. And art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall where there's no strength in men. Chance me off for loving Rosaline. But don't you not for loving and people, Lord? And me very love. Not in a grave to lay one in another out to hand. Pray thee, chide me not. <coughs> For I love now with grace for grace, and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well thy love did read by rote that could not spell. But come, young brave one, come go with me. In one respect I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Let us hence I stand on some pace. Wisely and slow they stumble and run fast. Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Well, not to his father's. I spoke with him then. Well, that same pale, hard-hearted wretch. That Rosaline torments him, so we'll sure run down. Tibble, the kids of the twelve Capulet, has sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Uh, Romeo will answer it. Any man can write my answer a letter. No, he will answer the letter's master. How he dared, being dead. Alas, poor Romeo, he is already dead. Stabbed with the white witch's black eye. Run through the ear with a love song. The very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow voice by chance. And this here man's when he comes to Tibble. Why? What is Tibble? More than a prince of cats. Oh, he's the greatest <laughs> captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick. Song keeps time. This is ever portion. He rests his men of rests. One, two, and a play on them. The very butcher of a silk button. A duelist, a duelist. A gentleman of the very first house. Of the first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Passato, the punter Roberto, the hay, what? The pox of such an antic, lisping, affecting fantastic those. Why, these new tuners of accent? By Jesu, a very good blade, a very tall man, and a very good whore. Oh, <laughs> why, that's not a mental thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these hardy knees, who stand so much on their new form. They cannot sit these on the old bench. Oh, oh, oh they're burned. Here come, Romeo. Oh, without his robe, like a dry herring. Oh, flesh, flesh, how art thou fissified? It's in your own boy, for sure. Well, there's a French salutation to your French spot. Mighty, but you gave this account to it fairly last night. What can it be to you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? <coughs> Pardon, little Petruccio. And my strange courtesy in such a case as mine. That's as much as I Such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hand. Meaning to courtesy? Bow to most kindly. You hit it. A most courteous exposition. Now, I'm the very pink of courtesy <laughs> for flower. Right. Why, that is my pump well flower. Come between us, good Bimbo. My wit's faint. <laughs> Why, this not written now in the for love? Now art thou sociable. Now art thou Romeo. Now art thou what thou art by art as well as by nature. And this dribbling love's like a great natural that runs falling up and down like a ball. Oh, stop there! I can do some 
Get your ladder by the witch your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it's dark. I am the drudge and toil in your delight, but you shall bear the burden <laughs> soon tonight. Go. Altered in a hide to the cell. Hide a high fortune. Honest nerds, farewell. <laughs> Smile the heavens upon this holy act, and after hours, I'm sorry, child's not. Amen, amen, but come on, sorry, can, cannot come, but an exchange of joy. One short minute gives me in her sight. To thou but close I with hands with holy words. Love to bearing death, do we dare? It is enough I may but call her mine. These violent delights have violent ends. Now go and stand over there.
be seen to do their amorous rites by their own beauties. Or if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, simple night. And so the suited matron, all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match, play for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Come, night. Come, Romeo. Come, thou day and night, for thou wilt fly upon the wings of night. Why did the new snow on a raven's back? Come, gentle night. Come, loving black browed night. Give me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him. Cut him out into the stars. He will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night. And pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of love, but not yet possessed it. And though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. Tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Now, nurse, what new nurse? <coughs> Why does thou remember that? Oh, dear, I'm done. Oh, the lady, we are undone. Oh, the lady, he's gone, he's killed, he's dead. It will be so angry. Oh, heaven, can thou no Romeo your count? Oh, Romeo. <coughs>
Truth so apparent to cleanse in my hand that I yet know not. Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. It is the doomsday to the prince's doom. A gentler judgment hath vanished from his lips. Not the dog from his death, but a body's banishment. Banishment? Be merciful, say death. Hear from Verona, art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without broad walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. He's banished, he's banished in the world. The world takes on his death. Come and death banished. Thou comes my heart for the golden axe and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. Oh, deadly sin, O oh, on thankfulness. Thy fault our law calls death. But the kind prince, having taken my part, hath rushed aside the law and changed that black word death into banishment. This is fond mercy, and thou sees it not. If taught him not mercy, heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse. Every unworthy thing may live here in heaven and look on her. Romeo may not. He's vanished. This may be lies too, and I from this must fly. Amen. But Romeo is banished. Say so stay yet that exile is not death. Can us none of sharp round night? No sudden mixed and so no sun made of death. Yes, I mean. Banished. To kill me, banished. How fond, bad man, hear me a little speak. Thou will speak again of banishment. I'll keep the armour to keep off that word. <coughs> Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy, <coughs> to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet banished. Hang up the lost thee, unless philosophy can make a Juliet. Tis planted down, reverse a printer's doom. It's not money prevailed, not. Talk no more. Oh, then I see the mad and have no ears. Should then, when wise men have no eyes, let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that that thou dost not feel. But thou as young as I, Juliet thy love, and now that married, she will murder doting like me, and like me banished. Then mightst thou speak, then mightst thou tear thy hair, then mightst thou fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. To grow your rise, not I, as the bread of my Hark how they look, the prince's man come and rise, thou will be taken. No, not the foolishness is this one from my study, thou will be taken and rise. I come, I come. Arise, run from my study, hide myself, I will be taken. There, on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. It's just in my mistress's case, just in her case. Even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, Romeo, stand up and you be a man. For Julia's sake, for her sake, right through there. <clears throat> now why should you fall into so deep an oath? Yes. Ah, sir, well, death's the end of all. Speakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Don't you think we don't murder her now? <laughs> Child of our joy, blood and bloom, but little from her own. How is it with her? What says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? She says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and down falls on her bed, and then starts up, and on Tybalt calls, and on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. Is it that name did murder her? Is that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman? Tell me, Briar, tell me what vile part of this anatomy that my name lodged. Tell me that I, that I may sack thy oh. magic. Oh, thy desperate hand! Art thou a man? Thy door cries out thou art! Thy tears are womanish! Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast! Thou hast amazed me! By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? I'll slay thyself, and slay thy lady that in thy life lives, by doing doubt hate upon thyself. What? Rouse thee, man! Julian <laughs> is alive. For whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead? There art thou happy. Tybalt will kill thee. Thus from this Tybalt. There art thou happy too. The law that threatened thy death becomes thy friend and turns that black word death into banishment. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings lights on my back. Happiness courts thee in a best array. Like a misty age and sullen wench, thou pounced on my fortune and my love. Take heed, take heed, for such die miserable. Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Ascend her chamber, hence and comfort her. But look thou stayest not till the watch be set. For then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live. 
till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou explored in lamentation. Go before, nurse, commend me to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the household to bed, which heavy sorrow makes an act unto. Romeo is coming. Oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. No one learning you. My Lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. Do say, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. <coughs> yes, sir. A ring she bid me give you, sir. I you may hate, for it does grow very late. Oh, how well my comfort is by this. Go hence. Good night, and here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguise from hence or journey mantua. I'll find out your man, and he shall signify to me from time to time every good hap that chances to you here. Tis late. Farewell. Good night. And that a joy past joy calls out to me, for grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily. We've had no time to move our daughter. Look you, sir. She loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly, and so did I. We were born to die. Tis very late, she'll not come down tonight, I promise you. But for your company, it would have been a bed an hour ago. It's time to blow forward, no time to move. Good night, then. Come in with your daughter. I will. I know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight, she's meet up to her readiness. Sir Paris, I'll make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she'll be ruled in all respects by me. Nay, more, I doubt if not. Wife, go you to Juliet ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris's love, and bid her, my Camille, When's that? Up at soft, what day is this? Monday, Monday. A Monday? Well, a Wednesday is too soon. A Thursday, let be. A Thursday, tell us she should be married to this noble earl. But will you be ready? Do you like this haste? Will we keep no great to your friend or two? For hark you, till being slain so late, it may be thought we held him carelessly, being our kinsman, if we revel much. Therefore, we'll have some half a dozen friends, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? I would that Thursday were tomorrow. I'll get you going. A Thursday bit then. Farewell, my lord. My lord, my lady. Go to Julia, there you go to bed. Prepare her for this wedding day, wife. Well, I will never know if you can bear my greetings after thee. Think of how we shall ever meet again? I doubt not. All these words are so sweet discourses in our time to come. Oh God, I have an ill dividing soul. Methinks I see thee now, though after long as one dead. In the bottom of the tomb. Either my eyesight fails or I look as pale. You leave me love in my eyes, so do you. For I saw a drink of blood. And you, 
Adieu. Must be 
me by stealth. Then as the case so stands us now at Duff, I think it's best that you marry with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman, madam. An eagle hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris had. The shrew my very heart, but I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead, or twere as good as he were as living here, and you know use of him. So from my heart. And from my soul, too, us for shrew them both. Amen. What? Thou hast comforted me marvellous much. Go in. <coughs> Tell why my life comes to fire long displeased my father to make confession and to be absolved. Mary, I will. This is very bad. <coughs> Very short. My father capital would have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course, I like it not. Moderately she reached the tumult's death. Therefore have I little talk of love. The bitter smiles not in that house of tears. I would I knew not why it should be slow. <coughs> Look, sir, here comes the lady. Happily met, my lady and my wife. Maybe, sir, when I may be a wife. Maybe must be on Thursday next. Must be, shall be. That's a certain text. Come you to make confession to this father. To answer to that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love him. I will confess to you that I love him. So with you, I am sure that you love me. Well, do so be more of a being spoke behind your back than to your face. Are you at leisure, holy father, or shall I come to it evening, madam? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter. Now, my lord, we must entreat this time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse him. Till then, adieu. Keep this holy kiss. <laughs> oh, shut the door! <laughs> and cheeks shall fade to palsy ashes, thy eyes windows fall. Like death, when he shuts up the day of life, each part, deprived of subtle government, shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and three <coughs> hours, and then awake us from a pleasant sleep. Now, in the morning, when the bridegroom comes to rouse thee from thy bed, Thou dead. Then, as 
the manner of our country is, in my best robes, I'm cutting on a beard. Thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meanwhile, shall Romeo, by my letters, come to know our drift, and hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy way in. <coughs> and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua, and this shall free thee from my present shame. If no inconstant toil or womanish fear of fate or valor in the acting of it. Oh, give me, give me, tell me not a fear. Go, be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a prior and speed to Mantua, bearing my letters to thy lord. Oh, give me strength, give me strength shall help me afford. Same wayward girl is so reclaimed.
eat for a week for the next night I want the county Paris to set up his rest the usual rest but little. <laughs> God forgive me, Marie and Ahmed. How sound she is asleep. Madam, madam. I let the county take you in your bed. He'll write you up in faith, will it not be? You won't dress it in your clothes and down again. <coughs> I needs must wake you, lady. <coughs> lady! Change them to the contrary, sir. Go you in. And madam, go you with you. And go, Sir Paris. Everyone prepared to follow this fair corpse unto her grave. The heavens do allure upon him for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their high will. the flattering truth of sleep. My dreams precise on joyful news at hand. True, my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a man leave to think. I breathe such life with kisses in my lips. <coughs> and I revived and was an emperor. Grogo! Emperor. Hannah. Dost thou not bring the letters from the friar? Oh, how is my Juliet? How fares my lady? How fares my father? How is my Juliet? I'd ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she's well, and nothing can be ill. The body sleeps at the Carl's monument. 
Could you roll the park plane, please? I saw hello by my kitchen's fault. Present that you were supposed to tell it to you. Pardon me for bringing these old news. You could leave it from my office, sir. Is it even so? Go, go, good. Go, get thee gone. I will enter tonight. If you sit, just have patience. She looks at pale and wild and doing what's in his adventure. Hast thou deceived? Go do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters from the friar? Good Lord. Good matter, get thee gone. <coughs> oh, sweet Juliet. I will lie with thee tonight. Thou art swift. Hello. Hello. Forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soothing, speeding gears will disperse itself. All the veins of the life we take and may fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua is more as death to any that utters them. Thus so barren, full of wretchedness, and fearest to die. Will the fords no law to make thee rich? Be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consent. I pay thy poverty. Not thy will. Here, take this. Put it in any liquid thing you will. If you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. that I for thee shall keep, nightly will be to strew thy grave, to weep. <coughs> hey, 
kept wanting something like the brooch. What curse put wonders this way tonight? Cross my obsequies and true not right. I'll put a torch. Muffle me my door. Give me the light. On thy life I charge thee. Let the dust cease on here. Stand all of it. Thou shalt not return to pry. What I, Father, shall intend to do. By heaven, I'll tear thee joint by joint, and, and strew this hungry church out with thy limbs. But time and mind sense a savage wild. Don't fear some more inexorable father, and he ties all the roaring sea. Oh, be gone, sir, and I'll come to you. So thou shalt show me friendship. Live and be prosperous, and farewell, good fellow. For all the same, I hide me hereabouts. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. I detest him more, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. I am forced thy rotten jaws to open, and in despite I'll cram thee with more food. This is that horse he banished Montague, who murdered my last, last cousin, with which grief it is said the fair creature died. And here he's come to do some further shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague, and bend it to pursue further than death. Condemn villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. You must indeed, therefore, carry my hither. Good gentle youth, that no death and man put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. <coughs> I'll be gone by heaven, I love thee better than myself, for I come armed hither against myself. <coughs> be gone, live in hereafter, say, man, when's mercy be thee run away. I do defy thy conjuration, and apprehend thee for a woman <coughs> here. Look thou for a boat, me. Then put it to thee, boy. Thou be merciful. Open the tomb. Lay me with Juliet. In faith I will. Let me peruse this face. Lucutio's kinsman. The county Paris. Said my man when my besotted soul did not attend him as we rode. I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. Said he not so, did I dream it so? For my mad you would talk of Juliet to think it was so. Give me thy hand, one writ with me in sound of fortune's book. Very thee the triumph of grave. Grave. No slaughtered youth. Here lies Juliet. And her beauty makes this vault of pleasing presence full of light. Love. My love. Death, that has sucked the honey of thy breath, hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty then sign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks. And death's foul flag is not yet advanced there. Tibble. Why is that there in thy bloody sheet? Forgive me, cousin. Dear Juliet, I have been yet so fair. Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? Fear if thou still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, yeah, here will I remain, with worms that are thy chamber maids. Eyes look your last, arms take your last embrace. Lips with the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss of day, respiring to engrossing death. Better conduct. Come on, savory guide. Take Francis be my speed. How often I'd have my old feet stumbled at graves. Who's there? 
Here's one. A friend. One that knows you well. This be upon you. Tell me, good my friend, what torches yon that lady lent its grubs, its lights to grubs and eyeless skulls? As I discern, it shines in the Capel's monument. Doth so, holy sir. And there's my master, one that you love. Who is it? Romeo. How long have you been there? Full half an hour. Go with me to the vault. I dare not, sir. My master knows not that I'm gone. Therefore did Matthew have death in his time to have been to Stay there. Look at the room. Fear comes upon me. And much I fear some little unfruitful thing. <coughs> Romeo, <coughs> old pale. <coughs> what? Paris too, steeped in blood. Ah, oh, what unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. The lady sirs. against mine age. Look, and thou shalt see. Are thou untaught? What menace is this to press before thy father to a grave? Where be these enemies? Capulet and Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discords, too have lost the brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Brother Montague, give me thy hand. For my daughter's joint shall no more can I demand. But I can give thee more. <coughs> For I will raise a statue of pure gold. 
that while the Verona by that name known, there should no figure at such way be said, and that a true and faithful Julian. This rich shall roam your bodies by your life, or sacrifices on our own mercy. A glooming peace this morning with it brings, the sun for sorrow will not show. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Mm -hmm.